Hello, all of our religious education kids who can't make our meeting today at four o'clock. I'm recording the PowerPoint so that you can go through it, maybe with your mom or dad or a grandparent or a godparent um, and keep learning. And then hopefully we'll see you next week at our regular time. All right, let's go ahead and begin. Welcome to week three. Today is a really special feast day. It's the memorial of Our Lady of the Rosary. So that's in honor of our Blessed Mother. And we celebrate the fact that we can ask for her prayers when we pray a rosary. So this is my rosary that I pray with. I have several, of course, but this is one of my favorites right now that I use. Um, when we pray the rosary, Mary is eager to help us. She prays with us when we pray the rosary and brings our needs to Jesus. The rosary is a very special prayer that we can pray every day. We're gonna talk more about the rosary at the end of our meeting. Okay, reminder for our Zoom meetings for next week. Um, you guys were so great last week. So I just wanna remind you that, you know, we all wanna stay engaged. Get your paper, your pen, um, make sure that you're on mute uh, when I'm uh, speaking so that you won't, um, there won't be a lot of feedback for other people. And then stay involved, ask questions, share your ideas. Okay, today's a little bit different with this recording, of course, um, but please share your ideas with someone, um, some grown up, whether that's parents or grandparents or godparents. Okay. Here's our opening prayer. It's a beautiful prayer to Jesus living in Mary. And you see the beautiful photo on my slide here. That's of St. Teresa of Calcutta, who loved to pray the rosary. So as we pray with our Blessed Mother, think of someone you want to pray for. There might be someone you want to name in your prayer, or maybe you want to pray for our leaders, both in our church and in our country, or our teachers who are working so hard for us, our healthcare workers, our firefighters, or other first responders who risk their lives to take care of us. So think about who you want to pray for and bring them to our Blessed Mother so that you and she can present these people to her son, Jesus. So let's begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. O oh, Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in your servants in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the perfection of your ways, in the truth of your mysteries. Reign in us over all adverse powers by your Holy Spirit and for the glory of the Father. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Look at all those action words about how we want Jesus to live in us to come to us in the fullness of power and the perfection of his ways, in the truth of who he is, in those mysteries we celebrate in the rosary. Jesus is truly king. He can reign over everything and bring us to, the he to heaven with the Father. All right, remember our theme for the year. Our theme is the New Testament. So we've been learning all about the New Testament or starting to, we have a lot to go. Last week, we talked about the gospels. Remember the word gospel means good news. The gospels teach us the good news of Jesus Christ. Do you remember how many gospels there are in the New Testament? And could you even write down the names of those gospels that we have in our New Testament? Write down your answer. You might want to pause this uh, presentation so that you have a chance to do that. How many gospels and what are their names? Write that down if you remember. All right, did you write down four gospels? Yes, there are four gospels. They're written by Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. In the next few weeks, we're going to talk a little bit about each one of those four Gospels. But let's today just answer a big question that relates to all four of them. We might wonder, do the Gospels teach us the truth about Jesus? 
or are they more like myths or legends and made up stories? Well, we believe that all the gospels do teach us the truth about Jesus. And why? Because when Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John wrote their gospels, they were inspired by the Holy Spirit who protected them from writing errors, from making mistakes about who Jesus is and how we need to respond to him. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John tell us the truth about Jesus. Here's how John puts it towards the end of his gospel. These stories about Jesus are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. So yes, we can trust the Gospels. They do teach us the truth about who Jesus is and what he wants of us in order to save us. So that makes the Gospels really special. And we show that when we listen to the Gospels at Mass, don't we? Before we hear the words of the Gospel, we trace the sign of the cross on our forehead, over our lips, and over our heart to make us remember to think about those words and to speak the words of the gospel and to love them, to cherish them in our hearts. We stand when we hear the gospel read because it's so important. We hear the very words Jesus spoke. All right, that's a little bit more about the gospels that are found at the start of our New Testament. All right, we're gonna talk about a really wonderful saint of the week, but He's not a saint yet. He's going to be named a blessed. His name is Carlo Acutis, and he was an Italian teenager who died back in 2006, which wasn't really that long ago, was it? He was an incredible young man. He was filled with the love of Jesus Christ, and especially Jesus present in the Eucharist. When he started to receive Holy Communion, when he was seven years old, he developed a deep love for receiving Jesus in the Eucharist. He was a lively and active kid, loved to hike, loved to play computer games, and even do computer programming. And so he started to use his talents to serve God. He began to develop a website that kept track of all the Eucharistic miracles, all the miracles about the Eucharist that have happened over the centuries in, in our world. And so he began to develop this beautiful website. He died of leukemia in 2006 before he had finished, but his family kept on the work. And now there's also a traveling exhibit that um, presents all of his work about these Eucharistic miracles, and it travels all over the world. We had it here at St. Mary last week. So B Carlo Acutis is going to be beatified. That means he's named blessed. That's the step before being canonized and then being called a saint. So he'll be beatified this Saturday on October 10th in Italy, Assisi, Italy. Now someone can get beatified on the road to sainthood when a miracle is proven to have happened through their intercession. And that happened with Blessed Carlo in 2013, a family whose child was having a serious illness um, of his pancreas um, prayed that Carlo Acutis would intercede or pray for him, and the little boy was miraculously healed. So the, the church in Rome has people who study these miracles, and they research it, and if they can say, yep, the doctors are right, there's no reason, no physical reason why this child should have been cured. It happened through God. And so when that's proven, then that person can be beatified. We think that Carlo may be named the patron saint of computer programmers because of his great work. All right, here's some different pictures of Carlo that I just love and a couple things he said. Blessed Carlo reminds every one of us that you are never too young to choose to become a saint. God can fill you with grace and lead you on the path to heaven. You don't have to wait till you're a grown-up. Blessed Carlo reminds us that
that even very young children can make the choice to walk on what he called the highway to heaven, right? The, the way, the path to Jesus. Here's how Carlo put it. He said, if we get in front of the sun, we get suntans. But when we get in front of Jesus and the Eucharist, we become saints. Isn't that beautiful? Here's something that he wrote right after he started receiving First Communion. He said, to always be close to Jesus. That's my life plan. I'm happy to die because I've lived my life without wasting even a minute of it doing things that wouldn't please God. He knew he was dying from leukemia. He was at peace with that because he knew where he was going. He was going to heaven. What a great model for us. What a great inspiration. I'm so happy that we have a new blessed starting this Saturday. Blessed Carlo Acutis. All right, your turn. Blessed Carlo Acutis used his talents to help people get to know and love Jesus. Think of a talent you have that you might one day use to bring people to Jesus. I'm gonna give you a couple examples. Maybe you're a great artist. What about using your talents to illustrate a book about Jesus or a book about one of the saints or one of the things that we believe in our church? You could write a story and illustrate it and inspire people. Maybe you're a great singer or a musician. Maybe you could think about using your talents to create, write a song or sing a song that gives God glory and praise. Maybe you have a great ability to teach people. Maybe you could choose to teach people about Jesus. Maybe you have an amazing talent for helping people feel at home and welcome, and you could use that to bring people together to share their faith and to serve in the name of Jesus. So think about a talent and then write it down or draw a picture of a way that you could use that talent to help others choose to be a saint. All right, you could pause this video while you do that. All right, I hope you thought of a wonderful way that you could use your talents to bring other people to Jesus. And that brings up our virtue of the week, which is generosity. Carlo Acutis showed so much generosity in sharing his talents. There's a picture here on the slide of our Blessed Mother Mary, and she's holding a mantle, a beautiful cape, over all these people who are asking for her help. That's another way to be generous, generous with our love in praying for others. So what is generosity? Generosity is giving freely of ourselves, of our resources, our time, our talents to help others. Generosity is a way of gifting ourselves to someone else, but also to God. We are praising God and serving him by using the gifts he gave us to help other people. When you exercise the virtue of generosity, it's important not to show grumpiness or resistance or, or to try and make it a big show, right? We want to give eagerly and without expecting other people to praise us and thank us and pay a whole bunch of attention to us. Generosity is almost, uh, we could do it in secret, right? So no one knows who gave the gift. So why should we be generous? Well, let's think about three reasons why to be generous. First off, God has given everything we have to us, even our very life. Everything comes from God. If everything has been given to us by a generous God, shouldn't we be willing to share with others too? When everything's been given, we should be willing to give as a gift. Being generous blesses others and becomes a way for them to know the love of God through our actions. So when people ask us, why are you doing this? Why are you helping me? We can say, because God's helped me, because Jesus asks me to be generous. And it's a way we can share the gospel with others. And then finally, being generous helps us avoid idols. That's when we become so attached to something that we almost think that thing, that whatever it might be, is like an idol to us, something that we put even before God in our hearts. So when we give things away, whether it's like a, a toy that we're done with or some clothes that we don't really need, 
or food, and not just the gross food we don't like, but the good food we'd be willing to eat, right? When we share the things that we enjoy, then we can clean our hearts of that attitude of, I've got to have this. It's so important for me to hold on to things because that keeps our hearts from God. Those are three reasons why it's great to develop the virtue of generosity. All right, here's a chance for you, your turn. What is something you can give to someone else? What can you give your time to? We can be generous with our time, not just our stuff. And what's a talent you can share with someone else? Think of one of those things, something you can give, a talent you can share, or some way you could be generous with your time. And then write that down or draw a picture and make it a real plan to be generous. Don't just say, oh, someday I'll give away those books that I've read and I'm not really going to read again. They're just, you know, cluttering up my bookshelf. I don't really need them. You know, something like that. So again, go ahead and pause the video and you can think about that. All right. Hopefully you thought of and made a real plan to be generous. Maybe as a family, you could choose a way to be generous. Let's learn a little Latin. Remember that we're going through the Hail Mary and learning that in Latin. So we have already learned, and you can say it with me right now, Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. That means Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. This week, we're going to learn the next part of the Hail Mary. Benedicta tu in mulieribus. Benedicta tu in mulieribus. That means blessed art thou among women. So let's say that all together. Ave Maria, gratia plena. Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus. How'd you do? It's hard, isn't it? Keep practicing. We're going to all get it. Now, just remember, here's all the words in English and in Latin of the Hail Mary, the Ave Maria. So we've learned Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus. Good job. All right, your turn. Copy down on your paper the words of the Hail Mary that we learned this week. Write them down in Latin. Sometimes writing them out helps you see the syllables that you need to pronounce. So write on your paper, benedictus tu in mulieribus. Good job. Again, you can pause this if you need a little more time. Let's review what we've learned this week. So what part of the New Testament did we learn about today? We learned more about the Gospels, especially that the Gospels teach us the truth about Jesus, that we can trust them that they're the inspired word of God. We learned about a special saint of the week, and he's not even a saint. Do you remember his name? Blessed Carlo Acutis. He'll be beatified, that means we can call him blessed, on October 10th, which is this Saturday. All right, what is our virtue of the week that we learned more about? Blessed Carlo sure shows that virtue, and also the Blessed Virgin Mary does too. And remember, today is that feast day of Our Lady of the Rosary. That virtue is generosity. And what is our little Latin? Here we go. One more time, we're going to practice our phrase in Latin. Benedictus tu in mulieribus. Wonderful. Here's another beautiful quote about being generous from St. Therese of Lisieux. We celebrated her feast day last week on October 1st. Remember that nothing is small in the eyes of God. Do all that you do with love. Don't worry if you can only be generous in little ways. 
Any way that you give with great love is a big thing. All right, final thing to think about, our last point to ponder. Today is the memorial of Our Lady of the Rosary. Just wanna remind you that when we pray the rosary, Mary prays with us. We're not praying to Mary. So when we pick up the rosary beads and we begin these prayers, we're asking Mary to join us in prayer because that's what she did when she appeared to all the children. Here's a stained glass image of Our Lady of Lourdes. So St. Bernadette saw this beautiful woman. And when St. Bernadette pulled out her rosary beads to pray the rosary, the beautiful woman had her rosary beads too. Mary had a rosary of gold and she prayed along with Bernadette. Now think about that. If we were praying the rosary to Mary, Mary wouldn't join us in praying. She'd be receiving our prayer, but that's not what happens. Mary prays the rosary too. That means the rosary isn't a prayer to her. It's a prayer with her to God. So when we pray the prayers of the, of the rosary, like the Hail Mary that we're going to pray in a moment, we're asking Mary to join with us in honoring God the Father in union with her son, Jesus Christ. So let's pray a Hail Mary today. And I really encourage you to pray a rosary. I'm going to send out a link to your family so that you can um, follow along with a rosary that's prayed online. And then you don't have to try and remember the prayers and think about the mysteries. It's just all done for you. So let's pray one Hail Mary together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Here's my question for you to ponder. Jesus told Mary to be our mother. That's why we call her our Blessed Mother. Mary prays for all of her children, including you. Who can you bring before her in prayer? Think about that today. Oh, God bless you. Thank you for working through this PowerPoint and looking forward to seeing all of you next week. Take care and have a wonderful day. God bless you.